right. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're, we're honoring you. <laughs> Hello, human beings. It's so good to be here tonight on a school night. You know, <clears throat> as the State of the Union address, I'm going to run out of here like my hair is on fire. I have to go back to work tonight. It's the State of the Union address tonight. But it's so interesting, guys, in that tape to hear the words, the soul of America is at stake, and they were talking in the mid-60s, and cut to 2024, where many people feel the soul of America is at stake still. Still. I'm fascinated by the bromance between the two of you, and I want the audience to understand that what the two of you have is so very special, Dr. Jones. I've known uh, Robert Kraft for a long time, and I've never seen him be so excited and so animated than when he was talking about this project. We were at a conference in Miami, and I was walking through the hall, and he said, you've got to look at this. Pulled me aside in the middle of the hotel and made, it, made me Watch the phone call that he made to you about the, the, um, the ad that was going to run in the Super Bowl. That's how, much it, that's how much you mean to him and how much this work means to him. But tell me why you became so emotional when he called you to tell you about that ad. I was very touched. Number one, you didn't sound very friendly when, you said, when he said, hello, Mr. Uh, Dr. Jones, you go, who's speaking? <laughs> that did not sound friendly. I don't know what time. Who, 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 who's speaking? <laughs> yes, it's Dr. Jones. And then when you heard it was Robert Kraft, you went, my brother. The rabbi guys just backstage said, Gail, listen to that word brother. It's so important, the word brother. But tell me what made you so emotional from that, that phone call. Well, what made me so emotional is that I had spent some time with uh, Robert Kraft and his wife and his and the Heisman, his dog. Yes. <laughs> Puppy. The dog and rules. Heisman. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and in the interest of time, I, I, I was so impressed with the depth of hidden sincerity. And, and, and we have an expression as a civil rights movement is that if you tell the truth, you don't have to make shit up. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So I've learned that. Could you repeat that again? <laughs> said, no, sir. If you tell the truth, you don't have to make stuff up, OK? <laughs> so I sat there. We spent a lot of time uh, together. And, and, and during the course of that time, he had staff and people around. And we were you know, really intensely looking at one another. We were just having a very candid, frank discussion. I don't know whether that discussion ought to be taped and seen. Because we, we were, we, it was just a frank, candid discussion. Yes, yes, okay? yes. And, uh, and so I still had that, I still had that embedded in my soul, uh -huh. all right? And I figured, you know, Robert Kraft is Robert Kraft, you know, he'll do what he wants to do with, you know, he was, he had a staff around, I don't know, there were several people around. Yes. Him. And so I was a little taken aback when he called me about that he was going to run the commercial because I knew the options that he had to consider. Yes. And so that's why I sort of burst into tears. Yeah. Because he was just matter of fact and so direct. Mm -hmm. But I remembered exactly our conversation. And that's what prompted me to cry because I, I know what we talked about. So. Yeah. Um, so I don't need to speak for him, he's here. <laughs> no, 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 I'll get to him because um, Robert, I want people to understand how deeply you care about this work. I know you do many things. I know you're, we all know you're very successful, you're very wealthy on and off the football field, but there's something about this work that, that lights you up in a way that you say you've never felt before. Why is this so important to you? Well, I sort of live the American dream. You know, I, I went to Columbia Uni College on scholarship went to Harvard Business School, full fellowship. My family, we didn't, we rented an apartment. And I've lived the American dream. And, you know, I was privileged. I had a big dream to own the NFL team in my home market. I had a greater opportunity to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. Mm -hmm. There are 32 mm -hmm. than to do that. And God's 
been good to me and life's been great and I really think it's because of America and the country we have here with all our problems you know it's still the greatest place in the world mm -hmm. but I think I'm probably the oldest person in this room except for this cool dude who's got me by a decade mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've never seen what's going on in the country over the last few years it it started with Charlottesville, mm -hmm. and to see in the United States of America men carrying signs dressed as Nazis saying Jews and blacks won't replace us. Yeah. And then, you know, what happened in the Tree of Life in mm -hmm. 2018 um, when people going to House of Worship, mm -hmm. and it's the largest killing in any House of Worship in the history of the country in the year 2019 or, or 18. 18. And, and, you know, think about it. Anyone going to synagogue today, there's an armed policeman in front and inside. And this is the United States. This shouldn't be happening here. And, and the hate that's going on everywhere, it just, it's, to me, it's changing the nature of the country. And so when I got this Genesis Prize in 2019, there's a million dollar prize that goes with it, I try to find a charity to give it to, mm -hmm. to fighting anti-Semitism and all hate. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find one that was executing on the ground. You know, most of them are either academic or confrontational. So you said, I'm gonna do something. Yeah. Because the difference is we all see what you see though, Robert, we all see it, but most people don't act on it. So you have the means and you have the passion and the desire to do it. And I'm trying to figure out why. Why is it that you were so deeply affected by this? Well, because I'm thinking what's important to me are my kids and grandkids yeah. and my heritage people. In my lifetime, we had the privilege, think of 2,000 years, to have our homeland where we lived 3,000 years ago and driven out in diaspora, mm -hmm. we were, it was created again. And I wanted to try to preserve the values that allowed that yeah. to happen. And that's my, it's, to me it's my, fa uh, my family and then it's the New England Patriots winning football games. <laughs> and then it's side by side to that is this foundation to try to preserve. I'm, I'm worried. What's going on now in America is like what went on in Germany in the 30s. Yes. And I don't want the 40s happening here. Yes, yes. And we need to stand together arm in arm like with this great gentleman here and mm -hmm. what he did. And, and I thought, you know, when I saw him uh, speaking and the influence he had on Dr. King who I just thought was one of the most eloquent leaders and speakers, the, that 60 years ago they were saying silence doesn't work. Yes. You've got to speak up. Yes. And it's the same thing now. And it, it, really, it really bothers me that people, everyone is staying in their lane and we need more people to come together. coming out and speaking out, not being... People are afraid. I don't know if it's uh, social media or what, but they're afraid to stand up and be mm -hmm. counted. Well, it's like, you, it's like what you say in the campaign, hate thrives on silence, hate travels fast. When you stand up to silence, you stand up to all hate. And I think, uh, Dr. Jones, I don't think people realize the closeness and the solidarity between the civil rights movement and the Jewish community. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, let, let me just say, you know, I, I, sometime in 1962, maybe early 1963, uh, I said to Martin King, I said, you know, Martin, I think you're a bad brother, so forth, but you know, I said, let's be realistic. I said, you know, we Negroes, we're only 12% of the population. And I said, there's no way we can do handstands all we want. There's no way we're gonna get 12% of the population is gonna get 88% of the population to do something it doesn't wanna do. Yeah. And he said, well, Clarence, that's why you have to work. I said, no, there's not. I said, we, there's something, 
You know, I said, uh, so I made that statement to him. And then I'm, 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 a, I'm not a bashful person, very gregarious, so I remember. <laughs> You're not being, bashful? First, <laughs> so, so, I, so I remember <laughs> being someplace, don't ask me exactly where it was, but I remember it was a demonstration. And I went over and I saw these uh, white people and I said, excuse me, why are you here with us? And they knew who I was. And they said, Attorney Jones, uh, you, and, you and your Dr. King should know that we, we're here because uh, it was a woman who spoke to me first. She says, this is what my grandpa and grandma would want me to do. So I didn't quite understand what she was saying. You see, you and your Dr. King, uh, Mr. Jones, should, should know that my grandpa and grandma, they died in the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And I listened. Mm -hmm. And we're here supporting you because this is what they would want me to do. Mm -hmm. So I paused for a moment. And this sort of internalized that I began to tear up a little bit. And I went back to Martin and I said, you know, Martin, I said, you know, maybe from a hundred yards distance, all white people look alike. They all, they all look white. <laughs> they all look alike? They all look alike. I mean, they they're all white? Alike. They're all white. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> I said, but when you get up close and personal, you know. I've never heard anybody say. No, no, when you get up, all white, from a hundred yards, all white people look white. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he says, yeah, Tom, yeah, yeah. Tom yeah. Brady doesn't. Okay. No, I'm <laughs> yes, yes, Tom Brady doesn't. Yeah. No, but I'm saying, that's how I said, but you know, when you get up close to them, yes. they are white, but some of them, are different. See, what do you mean? They self-identify themselves as Jews, as Jewish. And this is what they told me consistently, repeatedly. And he said, you're kidding me. I said, I am not kidding you. Mm -hmm. Now, I have, to tell, I have to tell a story that just says it all. It was Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel's 65th birthday. And he had been invited up to the Catskills for, by a, 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 a conservative rabbinical assembly. Mm -hmm. And Dr. King told me the, the story. He goes, he accompanies Rabbi Joshua Heschel to, to the, to the uh, Tatskill Mountains. And they walk into this room, this banquet room, and, and there are like 750 or more rabbis all, rest, all dressed in the same garb, mm -hmm. holding arms. And as, as Dr. King and Rabbi Heschel walked to the middle of the room, they began to sing in Hebrew, we shall overcome. Mm -hmm. Dr. King and Rabbi Heschel stand there sobbing. Martin says, Clarence, I expect you would anyway. But when you hear some of our brothers and sisters mouthing anti Semitic stuff, mm -hmm. you tell them that story. Mm -hmm. You tell them that story. So I'm sharing you that's the, the, most, the most conservative rabbinical assembly in the Catskills. When, when Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel and Martin King came to the middle of the room, they sang, We Shall Overcome, it was like the, the National Civil Rights Anthem. They sang it in Hebrew. That would bring you to tears. You they, know, just, they just stood there and sobbed. You know, Robert, the thing about the spots that you showed, we were looking at the spots backstage. I always believe, guys, that it's hard to hate up close. Right. And I think what those spots do so brilliantly, I mean, it just takes your heart and just, you know, where you see the stuff on the garage and then her neighbor has painted it and the, the father chastising his son, you go and tell them to, the, to their faces. Right. It's very hard to hate up close. And is that the message you want us to send, that we do need to figure out a way because we are more divided now than ever before, whether it's black, white, Democrats, Republicans. You know what I would love to hear tonight, uh, uh, say the union, you know, so-and-so has a great idea, who's a Republican, I'm not saying Donald Trump, but so-and-so some, some, so has a great idea. I <coughs> got to figure out a way that we can have civility and civility in this country. Right. And I'm so right. scared and worried about where we're going as a nation. Right, right, right. But the thing that you do in your spot so brilliantly, isn't that what you're trying to say? It's hard no. to hate up close. And we really do, sorry, we really do need each other. Yeah, well, we did, we, we hired BCG to do some research and, you know, what's going on. And, you know, 
90% of Americans, for example, know there's anti-Semitism, yeah. but they think the Jewish people are strong enough and that they can defeat it themselves. Mm -hmm. And what we try to show with these ads is Jewish people are 2.4% of the population, but yet get almost 60% of the hate crime, religious mm -hmm. hate crimes. Mm -hmm. and we can't stand up and fight against that unless we have brothers and sisters of all backgrounds standing together with us. And you know, this is this is yeah. Nice. And no, thank, and you know, I'll ask my friends, how many Jewish people do you think there are in the world out of eight billion? And people say anywhere from a hundred to five hundred million. And with 15 million, seven and a half in the United States. And we, we need the support. And I love the support that's gone on between the black and Jewish community over the last 115 years or so. Mm -hmm. But we have a real problem with young blacks in America who, who don't understand this bond. And, you know, we, our, our research showed that 50% of young black people don't believe that the Holocaust happened. You know, and, and when you have someone like Kanye West who has close to 50 million followers, I hear you. I hear you. Did I? and so when my well, wife he, and I he, had he the privilege. He's not helpful on this issue at all. He's not. Well, Pardon? I am surprised to hear that though, that, that a majority of young black men in particular don't believe that the Holocaust? Yeah, black young people. We have research so. Because it's, it's black and white, isn't it? Young, young people don't understand. No, this is the black community. The black community. I, I, have to, I have to tell you, my experience, you know, for the past 18 years I've been out at uh, Palo Alto, California, uh, Stanford University and so forth. But when I travel around the country, mm -hmm. I must tell you, one of the things that most shocking to me is that when I, uh, young blacks, I say blacks under 35, mm -hmm. is that there's this almost, I have to be very careful choice of my words, is that there's a kind of provoked, it's like a, a, a gratuitous anti-Semitism, believing somehow that, uh, this is where they talk to me, you know. Just, just, yeah. mm -hmm. Young blacks talking to this older, oh, you're Dr. King lawyer and, blah, 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 and so forth. But I hear this garbage coming out of their mouth. So I said, who told you that? Mm -hmm. What, what you garbage? That? What do you garbage mean? talking about, well, the Jews control everything. Mm. I said, really? What do they control? I said, what specifically do they control? What, what? In fact, I said, what Jewish person do you know that has done something to you? Because I want to tell you a story. I know Jewish people that have done things to me and for me. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you some story. Mm -hmm. and go back, okay? And I just tell them a story, mm -hmm. okay? I tell them a story. I don't want to take too much time. I tell them I never will forget the time that I went to see the Goodman family mm -hmm. because Andrew Goodman, Andrew Goodman yeah. Andy Goodman was found missing yeah. and the family had lost confidence yeah, in the FBI. Yeah. So they said, we just, we just asked Clarence Jones to come. So I walk into the Goodman family, and Carolyn Goodman just throws her blood, eyes, eyes on blood, just throws her stuff on me, and just sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, you know the story. You know the story they found. Yeah. They found. Three of them. And the, yeah. reason, the reason there was such animosity and hatred toward Andrew Goodman and Michael Schwerner because they were white, they were, white yeah. they were Jewish, and how dared they come in Mississippi? Mm -hmm. How dared they come and want to help Negroes? How dare they come? So they were outraged. So having seen that experience, and you know, I'm 93 years old, so. You could run for president? No, 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 no. <laughs> God help us. No, 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 no. I will say this. You do seem to have some vitality. Well, I have, oh, oh, yes, I got energy. some vitality. No, 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 no. But I say that to say this. 
I met some people today. I won't even, I'm embarrassed. I don't say any names. But I met some people earlier today I hadn't seen in years. I met, I met, I met some people who we were active together. Jewish activists. We, I mean, we loved one another. We love one another today. I have, I mean. Dr. Jones, why don't we know these stories? You know them, Robert Kraft knows them, but why but don't it's not young about people the know no, these no, stories? No, no, but I don't want to lose my train of thought. My okay. train of thought is this. <laughs> my train of thought is that, you know, I, I, I've been blessed with 93 years. Yes. I had great medical and all that stuff. Never smoked, drank champagne, jogged six miles a day, 15 years, from the age of 35 to 50. Six miles a day, six days a week. Hey, <laughs> that'll do a lot for you. And you don't, and I ate fish. <laughs> but I have decided that there must be a reason I have these 93 years. And so I know the reason. Okay, let's hear it. That reason is, just that I fortuitously met Robert Kraft. The first thing I said, by the way, to Robert Kraft, I said, you know, you broke my heart so many times with your Patriots, you know? Because <laughs> I played football, and I said, you broke my heart with your Patriots. But I met, I, met this, I met this brother. And you know, I've learned in listening and watching people, there's some things you just can't make up. You can't, I don't give a damn whether it's Solange Olivier, a great actor, you can't make it up if you don't believe it. Mm -hmm. And I sat and we had a dialogue for a long period of time in his department. I watched, I looked at him, and as we talked, and I'm thinking to myself, I said, you know, that, that brother's for real. This is what I'm yeah. thinking to myself. Yes, he is. Okay? Brutal. And then, of course, the most beautiful thing of all, here's a, here's a dog called Heisman, okay? The dog Heisman jumped up and jumped in my lap. And, his, and Robert and his wife looked at me. He said, he doesn't do that. Well, when Heisman loved me, I knew I had arrived, brother. <laughs> Heisman has great judgment, and uh, he rules. But, you know, I, I want to go back for a moment when you mentioned Goodman and Schwermer, because they were there registering voters with James Cheney. Cheney, right. yes. And they got killed by Clu Ku Klux yeah, Klan. Yeah, they were murdered. And they were buried in a secret grave, and they were discovered. And we have a saying uh, called Ain Rob Lee Tov, no bad without good. But when they were discovered and realized the horror that had happened, Jews and blacks working together, that was responsible for the Voting Rights Act bill oh, absolutely. that happened. Mm -hmm. absolutely. So there was something good that came out of that. And that's why... and and. I also, because this, this conversation is roaming around, I want to make sure that we get one thing out. When we met, um, uh, we met for three hours, and um, he was kind enough. We flew his group. We wanted a black uh, group called Quantity to make an ad for us, and that's how we got exposed to him. And we were running a different ad in the Super Bowl, and all our uh, geniuses had everything planned out for us. And, 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 and it was good. But after I met this man and spent three hours and saw what he represented in today's world, and you have your faculties, which is yeah. pretty cool. And yeah. you understood how important yeah. Heis yeah. Heisman yeah. was. Uh, as do you, uh, as do you, Robert. Yeah, as do you, no, Robert. and... You know, I drink champagne every day. That's <laughs> but I, I thought about it for a day or two, and that's why I call him it. And I switched the ad. It was just an instinct because of you, Thank and because of how you can speak to America today. And we have to get that message to young people. Yeah. This country is great. Well, that's what energizes me. That's what I. That's it's because of that. It's because of that. I think I'm going to live a longer period of time, but I'm not just living, I'm living for a purpose. Purpose, yes. I want yes. to tell them, let me yes. listen to me. Yes, you know. I want to tell the purpose of the greatest person I met in my lifetime, Martin Luther King Jr. Okay, now let me just tell you something. He came to understand and we came to understand there's no way hell impossible. 
He was the greatest person, or genius in my lifetime, but no way possible would we have been able to enact uh, the, the Civil Rights Act of 1963 or the Voting Rights Act of 1965, but for the 24-7 alliance and support of the Jewish community. Yeah. It would not have happened. So you agree with Mr. Kraft, you agree with Robert Kraft that we've got, the, there needs to be a better job in making sure oh, people yeah. understand Listen, the history. I, I'm ready to go on the road, start preaching, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is a great thing in the documentary, in the, the, your piece, where it says, they said, racism and anti-Semitism, the maximum of hatred for a minimum of reason. Oh, baby, that's true. Isn't that good? I like yeah, that. That is true. I like that. And I want to give credit, I don't, I don't see her out here, uh, Dr. Sherry Rogers from uh, uh, Detroit. Well, we can't see right no, now. No, I know, I know I can't see, yeah. but, uh, she, but she, she, and I met, she and I met some 12, several years ago when I went out to the Charles Wright Museum to speak. Uh, I wanted to speak to what I thought was going to be predominantly all white, all, all black audience. Mm -hmm. I wanted to tell them, I said, no, no, the reason I'm coming to speak to you I want you to know that how great Dr. King was, but let me tell you why we will be able to be successful. Little did I know, there's this, this, this white woman in the audience, she came up to me and she says, wow, I never heard anybody say that before. Mm. And that was the beginning of our friendship. Mm -hmm. Well, I love the friendship between the two of you. I, th I, I think you have something when you said we need to take this on the road. Well, what, do you hope, what do you hope Robert Kraft will come out of this? Your, well, your, your campaign, which, by the way, you put a lot of your own personal resources in it as well. Well, it's important. You know, when we embarked on this, we interviewed eight ad agencies, and one of them came up with this blue square, uh, Wonderman Thompson, as a symbol of unity and solidarity. And we're, I'm happy to say that we have seen great improvement in what we uh, uh, set out to do. We have educated now 20% new people in America of this issue hmm. and, and understanding that they have to stand up and, and, and not be silent. We have five million people now that are wearing these pins every day. Uh, very often, Tom Brady, Elton John, yeah. Ed Sheeran, uh, Van Jones. If you yeah. see him on CNN, yeah. he's he's I've wearing it, yeah. and and it's really a symbol for all people to be arm in arm, brothers and sisters, pushing back on hatred. But we we have to do something, but, you know, with young people. Well, I know and, what we're going to do. You know what we're going to do? What? You and I are going to take our show on the road, brother. That's what we're, we're going to do. We're going to take, and, but, and but I'm Robert, all for that, Robert. but we need messaging that can resonate with them, and we have to bring the people, because unfortunately, they're getting their information from TikTok and X, and you know, so much of that is just not accurate information. And, but and how did this happen to us guys? You know, there was a time when it seemed to be coming together. Is it because of the leadership in the country? Is it, why do you think this is happening? You know what we need? I'm very worried. We need, uh, you know, I go back to when Reagan was president and Tip O'Neill was Speaker of the yes, House. Yes. And they'd go at it during the day. Yes. And then 5.30, they'd, they'd sit down and have a couple beers, play nine holes. And we need more empathy. And that people have to listen to other people. People aren't listening to other people anymore. And that's what we need more than anything, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Dr. Jones? I think what happened to us? Oh, wow. What, well, technology is great. You know, I live, I live as I say, at Stanford University, hardest, hardest Silicon Valley. It's just unbelievable, the power of... Uh, um, technology and AI, AI, we have to just face that. But uh, in spite of that. Are you optimistic? I, I'm optimistic, I'm optimistic subject to the ability of um, those people who don't know, you have to be my age, you can be younger, but have the, but have the damn courage to stand up and, and tell the truth. You see what happens is that 
I'm not going to call any names. I'm just saying I know that there are a number of, let's say the community I think I know reasonably well, of African-American leaders, several of them younger than me. They stand silent, mm -hmm. OK? They don't raise their hand. They don't raise their hand and call out anti-Semitism when they see it. Why is that? You know? I, well, I'm trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure it out because none of them are much more successfully financially than I have. They have. Maybe it's because they think they have a lot, have something to lose. To lose. But don't what you does think, it don't you guys man feel... If it gains the whole world and it loses its soul. But don't you guys feel, people feel that when you speak up now, then you are vilified, then you are attacked, and you, you, so you do, you sit in silence, and you let the stuff happen. People are afraid to speak up. I, I think that's part of the reality, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to come to grips with that. And I'm trying to, I'm, I say to my friends, I said, okay, I understand it. I'm 93 years and I don't give a damn, okay? So I got that, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I, I give it, don't, don't misunderstand what I just said, I would give it. When I give a damn, I'm not seeking popularity. I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't I'm Do not seeking to right. be like, I'm seeking yeah. to be respected. You know what I'm saying? No, what For you the just content said, Robert, of what I say. No, what Robert Kraft just said, to do what's right. Oh yeah. Right. yeah, and 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 that people people are afraid today to stand up because of what you said, and they don't. Well, we've got to we've got to address no, that. No, and and we have to show leadership. You're addressing in that. it already. Pardon? You are addressing it already. already. You've come a long way. What you've been doing is a long way. The fact that you and I have come together that's a, that's an important thing. You well, know, it's your. No, I mean, what you're about as a person, no, no, that's my opinion. you've no, been I think... consistently that way, but people are afraid. I, I'll tell you, even when this ad came out with you in it, I went to a lot of people who have strength and uh, influencers, and they wouldn't come out and post it initially. Get out now, of here. Yeah, no, and that really bothered me. That yeah. bothers That's the mood of they the country. They wouldn't post the ad, wow. They, they were And they I know you concerned. asked them why. You asked them why, and what did they say to no, you? No, I didn't ask why. You I, didn't? No, I, I asked them to do, look, I'm not trying to make money or do any, I'm trying to keep this country great as you are. Mm -hmm. And we have to stand up and do the right thing and and by the way, this, you're next. When, you know, when I speak to people, it's not just blacks and Jews. It's the gay community, the Asian community, the yes. Hispanic community, yes. the Muslim community. Yes. It's, it, you're next. Yes. And we, we have to get people to speak out. And that's going to be the main thrust of our... That's the, reason, that's the reason I admire and have such profound respect for you. The fact that you see this. Everybody in this audience, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Robert Kraft doesn't have to do this. Let's get real now. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get very blunt. He does not have to do what he's doing. Mm -hmm. You do it as a matter of choice. Mm -hmm. Do it because you believe in it. Clarence Jones, the same could be said for you. You were 93, you could just sit at home and eat bonbons. Well, and drink champagne. <laughs> and drink champagne. <laughs> and drink champagne. Well, well uh, yes and no. I, I wake but up. But we need I'm, people to yeah. speak up. We do. We need people to speak up, people who aren't afraid. You see, I walk around with a, a, I walk around with a loop in my ear. Some of you don't have. I, I, I hear Martin's voice. I hear Martin King's voice like it was yesterday. What do you hear? What is he saying? Clarence. Be calm now. <laughs> I know you want to get angry with them, but be calm. I'm depending on you. Mm. Okay? Now, uh, spend less time looking at some of those custom tailored shirts <laughs> and more time thinking about what we need to do. I mean, that's what he would say to me. <laughs> well, I think he would approve of your snazzy shoes. Oh, yeah, oh, please. <laughs> oh, these are Zara's, man. Oh, please. <laughs> You're not with it unless you've got Zara shoes on now. Come so, on. So, so we will close it out. I, I would like each of you to 
what you would like the audience to take away from the conversation, from the videos that they saw tonight, and the work that needs to be done. Robert, you go first, because we defer to the youngers, and then we, then we will close with the elders. You go first. Well, for me, this is just, hopefully, our whole campaign is to get educate people on why they should stand up and, and not be silent and, and use this blue, blue square as, as a symbol of unity and solidarity. And I, I want to preserve the values of this country. I'm really worried about young people and what happens. And we're, we're going to start a massive social media campaign now geared at at younger people because what they're seeing and doing is it, it's sad to me and it's a lack of education so i just hope people will come away from this really looking to build bridges and bring people of all backgrounds together and stand up when they see an injustice. Yeah, well, we have people in leadership positions that are behaving in ways you don't want your children to behave, who don't tell the truth, who don't, um, who don't figure out a way to unite us and bring us together. And it's very, very, very troubling. <laughs> Dr. Jones, please close us out. The first 100 years are the hardest. <laughs> 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 never, 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 ever, never, never, ever, ever, never give up. Okay, I've just received word that uh, Mayor Adams has come and he would like to close out the program. We didn't know he was coming tonight. Come on out, Mr. Mayor. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Wow. Good to see you. My brother, my brother, my brother. Good to see you. You know, uh, just listen to Dr. Jones and uh, my brother, uh, Mr. Kraft. Uh, I've been here at a, uh, 92nd Street. Wow, you have a new name now, right? Uh, several times. And I'll never forget, and I was sharing this story. I was in one of the restaurants after finishing the day, and a, a young girl came in, young lady came in with a Howard University shirt on. <laughs> and, and she looked at me and said, uh, you know, you are one of those uh, Zionists and you are uh, anti-freedom fighters and you believe in genocide because of your support of Israel. And as she spoke, I just, I Googled Howard University and I handed her the phone and then I Googled uh, Julius Rosenwald, and she sat there and read and realized he was one of the co-founders of Howard University, Dilly College. She saw that he opened almost 3,000 schools in the Deep South. At one time, 40% of the black students that were educated came from his schools. And then I started telling her about during the Mississippi violent years, 51% of the young people that went there to fight on behalf of black folks were Jewish students. It is unbelievable how social media has hijacked the narrative and has normalized hatred, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, uh, anti-Sikh. The algorithms that are used to bring our children in dark places is what we need to really fight against. And that's what you're seeing here on the stage with two men that understand that this is their purpose and it should become our purpose. We cannot take for granted what we are seeing carrying out on the global stage and how it is being really just proliferated uh, throughout the entire globe. We've normalized hate. On college campuses, you can't even be uh, welcome to go to a social event 
unless you state you are anti-something. We have to really be organized and push back against it. And so my three beliefs, one, we must demand social media do better. All of the major platforms have to stop using algorithms to hate. Two, we have to regain control of our institutions of higher learning and use this as a teaching moment and not as a destructive moment. And lastly, we need to celebrate our diversity. We do something called Breaking Bread, Building Bonds, a thousand dinners across the city. Each dinner has 10 people where they come from a different walk of life and a different lifestyle, and we do something revolutionary. We talk to each other. We learn why we wear a turban, why we wear a hijab, why we wear a yarmulke, why we do what we do. This city is a jewel, and that jewel cannot be only in the comforts of only our churches, our synagogues, our mosques. If we only know people that look like us, talk like us, eat the same food, do the same things, that's a Shakespearean tragedy. We need to go beyond and lean into the discomfort of growth and really explore, explore this city. And so I thank both of you for showing us what it's like to be members of the greatest race alive, and that's the human race. Thank the you race, very much. Yeah. Nice. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.